Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Ayer. As we see this ongoing Russia Ukraine conflict, five new trends are emerging that point to a new world order. And Sridhar Chityala joins us to tell us about what these five new trends are. Sridhar Ji, Namaskaram and welcome to P Guru's channel, sir. Namaskar and uh, glad to be back to discuss. Uh, what we observe as some of the trends that is uh, reshaping as a result of this, uh, you know, tumultuous uh, Russia-Ukraine situation, uh, Sriji. And, uh, you know, a lot of things have been proved upside down. They thought that Ukraine could be occupied in a day or two. Somewhere, this Afghanistan experience has triggered minds of some people and they calculated incorrectly. Sridharji, I would like you to quickly walk us through the five trends that you're observing. I think the first and foremost uh, a trend, which is which is very explicit, is um, the interference game that United States used to play is fast receding, at least under Biden administration. I mean, Trump clearly demonstrated he is not for fighting wars, uh, and so therefore there was nothing under him. Uh, he kept the world fairly quiet. Biden is demonstrating uh, he's prepared to fund. He's prepared to. Uh, you know, uh, supply arms, but he is not prepared to put boots on the ground and he's not prepared to uh, even send his combat uh, military uh, into the into the war zone. So therefore, I think that's a big conclusion. And that's a message that is uh, that will reverberate in Middle East or West Asia. And most notably, uh, well, decision makers will calibrate uh, in Taiwan, Japan uh, and East Asian um, areas and including South China Sea as they calibrate their own defensive position. I think that's the first observation, Sriji. So um, one concern I have with that, Sridharji. So does this mean that in the very near future, the United States is expecting germ warfare, bio warfare, even virus based warfare? So it doesn't want to take any risks because it seems to have lost its handle around these things. I think it's a continuation of uh, Obama policy, which you are seeing under Biden. Uh, they somehow did not uh, didn't believe in wars, didn't believe in occupation. Uh, they believe in uh, the United States under at least uh, Biden, uh, Obama years believes in a negotiated solution towards resolution of conflicts rather than uh, the warmongering approach. So I think that's the conclusion. This bio stuff is very recent. The po the COVID, the impact of the COVID uh, and the consequences is more recent circumstances. Uh, rather than uh, rather than anything to do with past, but very clearly, if you have seen the Afghan exit uh, as well as the Syrian exit, the Iraqi exit, all those things happened. And then go back to Obama uh, years; he was very quiet when the South China Sea occupation occurred. He was quiet when the skirmishes happened between uh, India and China in the border. Uh, he was quite uh, silent when. Uh, Pacific uh, incursions and Pacific ownership was claimed both by Russia, especially in uh, the Japanese islands, as well as in uh, in the South China Sea. I think that's what you're seeing. And the second trend, sir? The second trend is the smaller nations are far more unified and they have a collective will to come together and be an influential player, not only in defending their own nations, but as well as to be the peacemakers. You can see Turkey, you can see Israel, you can see Poland, you can see Lithuania, you can see Latvia, you can see Estonia, you can see Taiwan, all playing major roles, doing little, little things to make it relevant for a nation under siege, in this instance, Ukraine. Much more than the, uh, the superpowers uh, who have, uh, you know, remained on the outskirts are what you call trying to lead them from almost uh, uh, lectures rather than anything else. Uh, Zelensky spared no words in criticizing both NATO and EU uh, in their ineptness in terms of handling the Ukraine situation. And the third one, sir? The third trend is energy is the currency. Energy will be the currency. Uh, energy, if energy was the currency before, energy is now spreading into three forms. Uh, the oil, the gas, which is going to be LNG or any other, and then the, the alternate energy, which is namely the electronic vehicles and batteries. So these three are going to be 
important vehicles of currency. The fact that the EU and uh, US have now struck an energy partnership to win away from Russia is a very significant step. On a smaller scale, Turkey and Israel coming together and saying, Turkey saying, I would rather get gas from Israel rather than from uh, rather than contesting the islands in the Mediterranean, rather than from Russia and be subjected to sanctions. And let me be more aligned with West or the smaller nations is a very significant step. As well. So they are not only coordinating on the energy side, but they're also trying to be the peace, trusted peacemaker with Ukraine. So that is, I think, a third significant trend, Shiji. And the fourth one? The fourth trend is still the EU U.S. corridor along with Japan, Japanese yen, still a powerful corridor in a global economic system. So therefore, uh, you know, people can shout at the top of the voice that they want ruble, they want, uh, you know, uh, you know, red min B. But where the energy is, the energy is in uh, energy trade will be conducted in U.S. dollar and euro and probably uh, Japanese yen will be a buffer. It doesn't matter whether it is euro or dollar. Japan says, I'll tow the line. So I think even in India, for a, for that matter, is saying that, you know, okay, if you want me to do dollar, I'll do dollar. If you want me to do euro, I'll do euro. If you want me to do ruble, I'll look at it if there are no sanctions. So I think that the currency is becoming, uh, again, a significant factor, Shiji. And the last trend, sir? And I think the last trend is very important. The United Nations as an organization has lost relevance. It has no role to play and it may do something on the war crime side, but as someone, as a forum where it can come together to come together to address issues is irrelevant. It is very polarized. It is my way or your way. That, that seems to be the trend. And the veto power, which was one of the areas which was considered for reform, which was refused, uh, is now still ruling the roost. Any one of the superpowers can, if, or any one of the five permanent members can effectively veto any decision, means that there is no resolution model that is available within the United Nations. And with that, our hangout comes to a close. Sridharji, thank you so much for sharing these thoughts. And as we see, these might get refined a little bit, but the trends are very clear. These have been clear for some time, but I think now these have kind of crystallized more clearly. Thank you very much, Sridharji, and Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar. Have a wonderful day.